Look at that. Look at that. Right. Easy, you. <laughs> How are we doing? Perfect drafters. Are we well? Good. Good. Right. We've got a keg review. We've got a keg review, people. And this one has been a long time coming. Yes, it has. It's a bit of an unsung hero. I've said it before. I've said it about the LaVirgin 360 IPA. Because that was an unsung hero. And it still is. It's a little belter. And if you've not tried that, try it if you like IPAs. It's a fruity little number. Anyway, it's not about the Virgin 360. It's not about that. But it's about a lager this time. It's allegedly a bit of an unsung hero, just like that. Because it's not that popular, I don't think. But those that have had it, they know. <laughs> yeah, they know. Because if you have a look on the Beerhawk website, as well as have a look in the, uh, in the Facebook page around Perfect Draft Keg Tips and things like that, anyone that has this pretty much speaks highly of it. I've not had it. I've not had it. What does Baldy think? We'll find out in a minute. But if you have a look on the Beerhawk website, there's over five, I think it's about 570 odd reviews of this lager. It is one that has been around for a long time. It's also one that's reasonably priced. That's always a pleasure. So this is £32.90 of your finest. So yes, not one of the most expensive kegs. So that's nice. Now, there are some quality lagers on there. If you are a lager fan, the Perfect Draft is a hell of a machine. It really is. I've gone through a hell of a lot of them. I've reviewed a hell of a lot of them. And when I've tried this, after I've tried this, what I'll try and do is position where I would put this in terms of quality amongst that vast range that I've actually supped. So what I've not reviewed, but I have had, is Lowenbrow. And I know that is often a firm favourite as well. Now this, just like the Lowenbrow, is from Germany. So, you know, purity laws at the ready, a kind of a sign that it's got to be at least quality. That said, so's Bex. But there we go. So it is a Hasroder, right? And it is from the Hasroder Brewery um, in Germany. We're looking at 4.9%. So just that little bit less than, say, a Spaten or Spartan or however you want to say it, a bit less than um, the Nistella, but you know, very much similar to those Jupilers, to the Hertogs. So let's have a try of this little beauty, see how it compares. It's a Pilsner. I'm expecting crispness, I'm expecting refreshness. Refreshness, a refreshing beer. That's what I'm expecting. Now, depending when this goes out, because I don't know if this video is gonna go out this Friday, which will be like the 3rd of um, June, yeah? It might go out then, or it might be the week after. The reason for that being is that Baldy's got old. Baldy's got old. Oh, Baldy has got old. I got old a long time ago. I'm old. Baldy's got hold of a perfect draft pro. Yes, I have. Ding, dang, do. Pro will be landing on the doorstep. Should have been today, but hopefully will be tomorrow. So, if I can get a review of that in, and I want to make that a good review. I do want to make, not saying I don't want to make every review a good review. Of course I do. But, I want to make that a bit more of a special review. I'm not going to do a massive unboxing and stuff like that, but I will do, um, you know, a decent, hopefully, review of that machine and do a bit of a comparison to this baby here, which has been an absolute belter and still is. But let's face it, we're perfect draft fans, no matter what machine we've got. And it's the beer that really matters. So just like this keg here, we're coming into the summer. That time is when these machines just hit their own. They do. They're like, boom. Refreshing beer on tap, at home, sun shining, barbecue on, boom, boom, boom. I want a bit of that. That's what I want. I nearly went into boom, boom, boom 
I want you in my room. I didn't. And it's a good job. So, let the usual proceedings proceed. <laughs> Let's have a look at that keg. Let's do the pour. I'll bring it in. We'll have a look at what it looks like. You know, do we see many bubs? Do we? I have heard it loses its uh, bubs a little bit, loses its carbonation quite quickly. But we will see if that is the case. We'll bring it in. We'll have a look at it. I'll have a sup. Before I tell you what I think to it, I will have some snackage. Yes, I will. I'll let you know what I think to both the beer and the snackage. And then I'm going to position it. I'm going to position it amongst those 23 other lagers on the perfect draft. <laughs> yeah. And I think I've reviewed about 20 of them. So I'm going to position amongst those. Then, people, I'm going to give you the rating. That's the order of play. Let's get stuck in. Let's have a look at that keg. Come on. So there we go, people. There's the keg. An absolute beauty. I don't know why, it looks the same as every other keg really, but the design. Let's go in on the design. What do we got? We've got a Hasroder. Yes, we have premium pills. Yeah, now we've got it. S-E-I-T, is that what it says? I'm hoping that's what it says. 1872. It's a long in the tooth, old boy. Now then, the keen-eyed amongst you will spot. That is 05 2022. Now we are in May. It's happy days. Look, the best before is just that. It is a best before. You're fine after it. But anyway, we're still in. We're still in. Nice red background. I do like that rouge. I do. It's got an eagle thing there. It's just looking up at that logo. That eagle thing. Is it an eagle? Is it a peacock? It's a bird. That bird is saying to me, Boldy, let this lager fly into your mouth. Right. Let's pour it and let's have a look. Let's have a taste. There's the keg, people. Let's try it. Here we go, people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it in this most famed of Stella Artois chalices because this keeps it lively. Yes, it does. That nucleation in the bottom of that glass is a little belter. If any glass is what you're going to get, it's this one. Right. Let's do a pour. Let's do a pour. How does that look? Oh, you can't even see me, and Happy days. Right, we're in. Let's go, peeps. All right, there we go, people. Look at that. You can't say fairer than that. You might have seen those bars flying down. Sometimes that happens on the first pull in a new keg. It just does. Right, that, that's not looking bad. Look at that head there. Let's bring her in. Let's see what we can see. Look at that. Look at that beauty there. Good bubs. Now, obviously, we're yet to see how well it holds those bubs, but yeah. Stella Chalice doing its thing there, as you can see. Nice blonde colour. Lovely looking colour. Lovely looking head. Quite compact, actually. Nice foam head there. Nice and white. Um, yeah. It's good, isn't it? It's not a Stella. If you cut into this part right now, fast forwarding or whatever you like to call it on YouTube, scrubbing along. Don't scrub along and think that's a Stella. It's not. It's a Hasroder. That's what it is. It's out of the perfect draft. It's a Hasroder. It's looking lively. It's looking nice. It's feeling cold as it would do coming out at those three degrees. Let's give it a sup, people. Let's give it a sup. Lovely stuff. Right. Gonna give it a little tippy-toppy too, as you do. Yep. Look at that. Look at that. Right. Easy, you. It's got domage. Domage on a pilsner. Right. Let's crack in, people. Let's go. Lovely stuff. <laughs> look at him. Just look at him or her. It's a pint. It's a Hasroder. Let's have a sup. Cheers. Woo! 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Straight away, people, that is refreshing. That is crisp. Crisp. I tell you what, that Perfect Draft Pro Machine, yeah, I was a little bit disappointed that it didn't come today. But for lagers, can it really make that much difference? Because three degrees is just good. It's just good for lagers. It really is. That's a good point. That is a belter. It is. It really is. That is so crisp and refreshing. And I tell you, it's been absolutely leathering it down today. It's been one of those days, kids inside, I'm climbing the walls, people. I'm climbing the walls. And I just needed a beer tonight. And I am lucky and fortunate to have this that I could come out to and just think of you. Just think of you. And like, yeah, sometimes you just need it, don't you? You do. You're kind of like, <sighs> yeah, it's like when you do a lot of DIY. You know, when you're firing about, drilling holes in walls and caning around throughout the... Uh, drilling holes in walls. What am I on about? You know, if you're just putting up shelves or, you, or you're painting, you know, you're painting, glossing, hate glossing. But, you know, it's hard work. You're up and down ladders and stuff like that all day. You know, the other day I was, I was cutting down hedges. You know, not literally all the way down, but trimming the hedges, making them look neat. Hard work. My arms were killing me. And when you have a beer after doing something like that, it can make you think that is just one of life's little pleasures right there. Because you've earned it. You've really earned it. You know what I mean? Even the calories, you've burnt the calories off. I did about 25,000 steps the other day. I earned some beers. I did. And I had them. And it's like, you know, like now, I've earned my beers. We're the kids today, you know. Because it's wet outside, I do. I like my space. I like to get out and you know, be out and about. And it's you know, when they're inside and they want to play board games and that. I enjoy it. Don't get me wrong, but it's kind of yeah. You know, they get bored after about twenty minutes. You know, I've not even bought blooming Mayfair and Park Lane yet. Anyway, bit of a tangent, but sometimes you earn your beer, and it can make you think especially when I've been doing these reviews, when I do earn those beers, that I'm being a little bit biased because of the scenario, because I'm really gasping for a beverage. And I just think, yeah, that's a belter. Now, so I don't know if that's what's making me think that's even better than what it is, but that is a very nice lager. Simple as that. Good Pilsner, refreshing, crisp, nice and cold, at three degrees, absolutely spot on, perfect. Carbonation levels are good. I mean, this glass always helps. Good clingage. Good clingage. Really nice. Very good palatable taste. I'd say kind of a medium bodied lager. That's what I'd go for there. Slightly sweet and, and almost a little bit dry. But, um, you know, very crisp and very, very drinkable. Good mouthfeel. Happy days. That that's a nice lager, that is. I can see what a lot of people are saying in the fact that that is a bit of an unsung hero. It is. I checked the price just before I started doing this review. And, you know, like I say, £32.90. It's in stock. That's in stock. And when I've been looking at the kegs that are in stock, because I do these reviews, generally this one is. So, a good one to throw in. It's going to be difficult to put this amongst those other 23, 24 lagers. In fact, I think when you do filter it like that, you know, on the Beer Hawk website, you say style lager, style filter lager. Some of them are a bit random in there. It's got like die bells in there, for example. I wouldn't class that as a lager. I think also the, the Die Kirsch um, Christmas one, Noel, that's in there. Bit random again. So I'll have another little look and I'll position this. It's going to be tricky. I know already what it's beating. I do know what it's beating, what it's actually coming above. I can't, I'm comfortable with. 
but some of those that are mid to high range yeah this is going to really compete with those it is here's to those german purity laws <laughs> happy days right let me have some snackage let's have this snackage right so there it is yeah yeah, there's a little story behind this, isn't there? If you've been following my channel, if you've been looking at it, and you saw, I think it was the BrewDog review, that I I tried out the Max Strong Jalapeno and Cheddar Coated Peanuts. I was incredibly excited about those peanuts. Probably a little bit too excited for some nuts. But... The reason for that was I love the crisps. I love the jalapeno and cheddar crisps. They take a lot of beating. They are, as is said on the bag, perfect with beer. So, I was really disappointed with those jalapeno and cheddar coated peanuts. I was expecting more. I was expecting some real kind of punchy, bing bang bosh in your mouth. Um, you know, good nuts. Good nuts. But they weren't. They were seriously lacking any spice whatsoever. So when I saw these ones on the shelf, I thought, should I go for them? Is it going to be yet another disappointment? Or is it going to be happy days? Because these literally say spicy wasabi. Is it wasabi? Zabi? Wasabi? Zab? Zabi? What? Wasab? I don't know. Anyway. Doesn't matter. They're spicy. Right. Double coated, they are crispy. The others were crispy, just not spicy in the slightest. Let's have a look at the blurb. We've got Walker's Max Strong double coated peanuts, the irresistible peanut packed with a bold crunch and flavour perfect with beer. Enjoy the ultimate taste, experience every bite. Max spice, max satisfaction. Suitable for vegetarians again, no artificial colours, no added MSG, which is good. And they are here to help via Facebook, via Twitter and via their website, walkers.co.uk. It's got a chap over here, he's popping the litter in the bin. That's a common symbol on a lot of packaging. It's encouraging you to throw away your waste. Right, wasabi flavoured coated peanuts. It's a nice green bag, it's got some flames in the green, you very rarely see that, you normally have a red bag with flames on, but here we've got a nice green kind of coated bag. The bag is irrelevant, the flavour is not. Let's have a go, let's see what they taste like. Lovely tear bit, lovely tear bit, I mean that is easy to get into the bag. If you were six deep, you'd still get into that bag easily. I'm going to chuck it over there. I, t I tell you what, I don't like mess in this bar. I don't like mess. Although that said, I've spotted a cobweb. Right. Here we go. I'm going to have another little sup before I get into it. It is perfect with beer. Okay. Bit of a snifty. Let's have a snifty sniff. Not smelling too uh, too spicy, got to be said. Some people might be put off with the green tint to the peanut. There's definitely a, a green hue. You're not going to spot it on that, but, uh, but there is. Um, almost like holding up a very... Uh, a very hard P, which would make sense, really. I'm going to go for three. I'll put six in my hand. I'm going to go for three. No idea of the spiciness level, but, you know, let's go. It's not, it's not Carolina Reaper or something, is it? You know, it's not a ghost chili rubbing in your eyeballs for a few views. No, this is basically simple peanuts.
Right. There's got to be something wrong with these. Got four. Let's go for four. Zero spice yet again. Spice, I tell you, there should be a a kind of a a body, a classification system, one that is a little bit more vigorous, rigorous, and that applies to everybody across the board with anyone that uses the terminology of spicy. There should be like an off gem of spiciness rating. Yes, there should, because there's something wrong. There, it's trade description. They're not spicy in the slightest. At all. The flame within the O, admittedly that's on all of them. You know, that's on the crisps as well as the peanuts. It just, just, it's false. It's not spicy. That said, they're tasty. I think they are tasty. I think I prefer these to the jalapeno and cheddar nuts. I do but they're not spicy. Don't go into these thinking that you're gonna get any warmth whatsoever. But if you like that wasabi kind of taste, there's nothing wrong with that. It's there. A tingle maybe? A tingle. If you put it right on the end of your tongue, right on the tip, you get a little ding, that's it. Yep. Yeah. That's all I'm getting. I'll tell you what, they're tasty, they're nice, but they're not spicy. I can sense though, yeah. They're a good beer snack. They are a good beer snack. There's nothing wrong with them as a beer snack. Just not spicy. I won't say it anymore. That's good though. I'll tell you what, actually, a nice bit of heat and then into that would go down a little treat. Anyway, let's pop them there. They're quite Moorish. That coating that they've got on those nuts, absolutely spot on. If they did bring out an absolute fiery belter of these nuts, they would, ha they, would, they would smash it. They would smash it. They would be the ultimate nut. They would. I think the Thai sweet chilli sensation nuts are actually probably the, um, the spiciest nuts I've had. Which ain't that spicy either, but they're spicier than them. I know, I'm not, I'm not going to go for some ridiculous things that make me sweat on camera. No. Right, let's do some gradings. That. The Hasroder, the £32.90 lager. What am I going to give it? Now, I'm going to give it a rating, and then, like I say, I'm going to put this amongst the other lagers. Where do I position it? And people might say, but Baldy, I watched review number three of the, uh, of the Spaten, you know, the one with you holding the spade, um, which was a bit random, but... I watched that and you gave it an eight and now you're giving this a, you know, seven and you've you put this above it in the rate. I'm not saying I'm going to, but you put it. Don't worry about that because over time, I didn't know what this was going to get. And over time, you know, you kind of reconsider ratings a little bit. Of course you do. You know, especially when you've got to, you've got to re-benchmark them. Because at the end of the day, generally... You, you know, you order three, six, nine kegs. You probably, you know, most people would probably order a three pack. And it's kind of like, what lager would a lob in there? Well, that changes over time as you try different ones and as new ones come out. So that's why, you know, you've got to sometimes reclassify whereabouts they come. That's a long winded way of saying, you know, I'm just going to do a fresh rating system. So, the Hasroder. What am I going to give that? I'm going to give that an 
I think it's a belter. I think it's so crisp, it's nice and refreshing. It hits the spot, especially after a hard day's graft. Belter. Those nuts, I'll give them a 6.5. They're, they're tasty, don't get me wrong, but the spiciness yet again let me down. I can't remember what I gave the others. Doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. Okay, so where in amongst the 21 other lagers that I've had on the Perfect Draft does this come in? Now, I'm not going to go through the whole list, but what I'm going to say is this. I think number one still is, for me, Hertog. An absolute smooth little belter of a beer. It's just a pleasure from the first to the last drop. Then the Jupiler. Those were very close, very close, but it just edged it out that Hertog did for me. Then I would say the Standard Stella. The Standard Stella is a hell of a keg. I've heard some people say they've had a duffer here and there, and that's fair enough. Then I would say, right, so there's Spaten and this Hasroder. I'm going to say this Hasroder just edges it. This comes in at number four, then the Spaten at number five. That's what I'm saying. So it's now cracked in, for me, into those top five of lagers on the perfect draft. <laughs> so you can't say fairer than that. I would then probably put something like Stellar Unfiltered in there. I think that comes below the Spaten. Um, I would then go for Lowenbrow, quality beer. I think I've actually never done a review of the Lowenbrow, but I did have it, I think it was about the second keg that I had on this. It was a pleasure. Little bit kind of lost its carbonation quite quickly, but a nice, refreshing, crisp lager. Absolute belter. Then you get into those kind of ones that are very middle ground for me. Your kind of golden goose lager, your La Lefe Lalagra, those two, they were disappointing. Um, and I would say they are coming in then. I would say your tenants, I don't know, maybe that comes in in between those two. Lisa, I was a little bit disappointed with. I know it's got its fans, but I'm going to bring that in next. So tenants, yes, does beat Lisa for me. That's the way it goes. Then you've got Corona and Bud, right? Corona and Bud, well, Corona stick a lime in it. It's not awful. It's not a terrible lager. And not, neither of those others above it, you know, if you've not had anything else, you know, yeah, you'd say it's good. So the Corona would sit there for me, then probably the Bud, then probably the Bex. Yeah, that's how it goes. Bex Gold, I missed the Bex Gold. That probably just goes in above the Tenants. <sighs> there you go. That's how I'm seeing the kind of land of the lie of the lagers for the perfect draft. Anyway, people. That is the Hasroder. I've given it an 8.5. Those, I've given it a disappointing, what was it, 6.5, I think. I'm going to pull another one. I'm going to check my tracking on the uh, Perfect Draft Pro. Come on, yodel, man. But for now, people, have an absolute belter of a weekend. If it does go out this Friday, this one, then have a good Queen's Jubilee. And if it goes the Friday after... I hope you had a good Queen's Jubilee. Yes, I do. Have a few beers with it. But for now, people, have an absolute belter of a weekend. Enjoy whatever you're doing, whatever festivities you're having. May the ale flow, and come on, son, please shine. Have a good one, people. Have a good one. Cheers.